Well, here we are, the long awaited cutting out the wing and applications. Now, I have to apologize for those who have been waiting for this. I know some have. My laptop died, the motherboard went, I had to spend a thousand pounds and get a new laptop, and life just overtook me. So, here we are, we're, we're ready to go. You're going to need your ruler. Uh, a one foot ruler you're going to need your carbon rod which looks very much like this and hopefully if I twist it round there we go I hope you can read that yeah there's the sizes is that upside down I don't know I can't see but basically I will read it out to you the size of this carbon rod is five mil by three mil by one mil so basically it's five mil thick the inner part is three mil and the one mil is the circumference around there okay so this is a five mil rod you can use a six mil if you want to but it doesn't really matter too much so what I've done is to prepare oh yes and also you're going to need your servos okay it's advisable to buy a servo tester and as you can see this cost ah, three quid okay uh, some tape this tape is well it's two and three quarter inches wide if you like it's 48 millimeters wide so 4.8 centimeters okay now before I forget somebody asked me what battery am i using i'm using an overlander 900 milliamp hour 11.1 volt 3s so that means it's a three cell so that is what i'm using and there's your dean connector there and that's that's all you need get yourself two or three of them you'll have a day of flying and you won't regret it and put velcro on the bottom there's a bit of muck there from the flying field that soon comes off get yourself some velcro okay so that's the battery i'm using and i've been asked to identify that so we've got that out of the way you're going to need some epoxy resin now this is five minute epoxy resin it comes in a two part of the hardener and it does actually go off in five minutes if you mix it properly so i suggest you get your surgical gloves on which is very common at the moment and i will be using my dremel uh it looks a bit crazy fantastic but it's a great tool if you haven't got a dremel do not despair i will show you the alternative ways of doing things uh, you're going to need a little brush because there's going to be bits of everything flying everywhere now if you have a very sharp knife or a blade if you use this it may be advisable for you to get a candle heat the blade up with the candle now you haven't got to get it red hot you just got to get it hot and then it enables you to cut the foam very very easily and you get a nice straight line and it comes out really nice now then so where are we now you're going to need a notepad and pen for this so go and grab your notepad and go and grab your pen because i'm going to give you lots of different uh, measurements so the first thing the biggest burning question that ever gets asked on all these sites about little gliders and facebook and all these other things is where is the center of gravity the center of gravity is here now i've measured this from the leading edge back is 38 millimeters so from there to there you measure 38 millimeters and that is your c of g your center of gravity very very important you mark that okay now your carbon rod in this instance needs to be 68.5 centimeters 68.5 centimeters length of carbon rod 
this bit. I've not cut that down yet. Okay. Now the position of that is if I can read my own writing is 46 millimeters from the leading edge or am I telling you a lie? I'm probably telling you a lie. If I measure it now from the leading edge it's actually 62 so it's 62 millimeters from the leading edge to where that carbon rod goes in okay now your servos are here so you measure from your center line 12 centimeters and that goes to that edge there and again to the other edge now i made a mistake uh marking this out i could have got another wing and done it properly and then you wouldn't have known any different but i thought no i'll leave the mistake in because it just gives you a little bit more confidence to say hey you know if the fat guy can make a mistake so can i but the important thing to do when marking these things out is when you get your servo okay which is this one here which I keep putting up to the camera every so often a nine gram servo yeah when you put it in it goes that way around like that yeah and the other one goes that way around like that then this cable you cut a line here and you push the cable in until both cables come to the center okay so I'm going to give you some more measurements now the next measurement is your ailerons now between this edge here and this edge here is 56 56 centimeters okay between that edge and that edge so if you measure out from the center to there and one center to there in fact i'll just re-measure that now that is well actually it's your half 56 25 so that'll be 26 so that says 26 to me and that one there says 26 so that's where your ailerons start okay now you have to line up the edge of where the arm goes off the servo so going in a straight line this is where you put your control horn okay now if you can get yourself from the pound shop one of these big long rulers this is 90 centimeters so it's just under a meter this cost me a pound okay get one of these and you'll be able to put a straight line all the way along okay and then mark out your ailerons so if you mark it all out before you start you're going to get it right and there's no guessing you're making it up as you go along and broadly speaking i think that's about it so <clears throat> from the trailing edge we're going to measure in millimeters 43 43 millimeter from the trailing edge and that one will be 43 as well so you've got to make sure you get your center line actually bob on and that there will be bob on that be bob on and then it's just a case of getting that into a straight line okay so you're going to cut that bit out there and that bit out there and that's where you put your control horn there and there that's where you put your um, servo so just to reiterate the width of the servo is from the leading edge 46 millimeters from the leading edge to the edge of the servo so where we'll put it so from the leading edge here to that edge there is 46 millimeters that is 12 centimeters from the bottom there to the center of that line there if you follow those guidelines you, you don't have to put it there if you don't want to you can put it where you want to but that's how i'm doing it okay and mine my you know, my regular one exactly the same layout flies beautifully i've been flying it today no crashes 
and everybody's going wow really like that so there we are now before I go any further if you recall from my last video I bent these dihedrals up and I laid a weight on them overnight and it was flat as a pancake I then left this in my conservatory for a week and guess what the bends back isn't that interesting so without that carbon fiber rod being in to keep the dihedral flat it's going to naturally come back so before I actually glue the carbon fiber back in um, I'm going to bend that down again so yeah there you go learn something new so here we go and what we're going to do is we're going to get our knife and what we're going to do is you see you don't want to cut too deep so how deep will that knife go well, this this particular knife is just the right depth so we're going to do is just measure the depth of that servo mark your blade so you don't go all the way through the wing because you don't you don't need to okay and then what you do you cut into all the lines all the way around like so and you just follow the line you just follow it through like that and you go down to the depth of your blade okay once you've done that which isn't difficult and it's easier if you if you heat up the blade with a candle it's twice as easy and I'm just going over it again just to make sure it's absolutely bob on there you go you can then proceed to cut that out now you can either use your knife or you can use your Dremel I think on this occasion I'm going to use the knife um, by the way I've been seeing some things written on websites about using um, Sino. This is Sino safe. You don't need a special cyanide, which is basically super glue. You don't need a special super glue with this foam. It won't melt it. Okay, so if somebody tells you otherwise, they are misinforming you. You can use super glue. Glad I got that out, that out of the way because I was hoping that I would uh, not forget. So, as with the fuselage, let's just cut that into squares. Okay. And just go into it. And you're seeing this as it happens. So if I make a mistake, you're going to see it first. Okay. Cut that into squares. Okay, then get some pin nose pliers, start in the centre, grab, twist, pull, grab, twist, pull, grab, twist, pull, and you just keep going round until you've cut the whole thing out. And I'll probably fast forward this bit to save you getting bored. Now, just get your servo and see if it fits. It's got to go a bit deeper, I think. And now you'll see that now that it's partially in, why you need this line here because that has got to go in there. Okay, and I've got to make that slightly deeper. So, to save time, I'm going to use my Dremel. Okay. It's only to save time because obviously you don't want to be watching me doing this all day. So here we go with the Dremel. Now let's see if I've uh, adjusted this correctly or not. This is the attachment. I think this cost me about I don't know about seven pounds. I think 
and you've got a little uh, little router there. This is a, a, a six mil router and uh, it's all put in and everything so let's turn it on see what happens next. So let's do the carbon rod. I'll come back to that in a minute. There you go it's none of this is made up and there's no studios and blonde girls smoking around so okay to do the carbon rod get your knife make sure it's a sharp knife if you have the opportunity get a candle heated up I'm not going to heat this one up right now because I'm, I've set the Dremel to do it but basically all you're going to do to score along I'm not doing this in shot am I score it along Okay, get to the end, and you just go along like that, and you pull that out. Twist, pull. You do that all the way along. Now, if you're going to cheat like me, you get your Dremel out, which is now, at the, I hope, at the correct depth, and you put that in, and you turn it on. And you're not going to hear me, I expect. Okay, I've only gone halfway across just for now, just to speed things up and just get your knife and just clean it up a little bit. Okay, do a nice neat job there. And this is where the hand brush comes in. Okay, get all that rubbish out of the way. So, there you go. And then you get your fiber, carbon fiber rod, which I've not cut down to size yet, but you'll see that just fits straight in. It's the right depth and it'll be flush with the surface so what I'm going to do I'm going to finish that line off cut the carbon rod to length okay and then I'll show you how I dig that out uh, so I'll be back in just a moment okay okay so I've just routed all this out and now I'm going to do this at the proper depth which is uh, 12 mil uh, this needs to be 12 mil deep, so I'm just going to switch this on now. And I'll just help me turn the power on. There you go. Okay. So. Let's do a trial fit on that. And that should go... Wow, look at that. Superb. Now the next part is to bury this cable into the wing. Okay, so we just follow that line that I have drawn on, which is 12 centimetres long from the centre point. Okay, so I'll just cut that in from the centre point all the way along. Just go through it a couple of times. Okay, that's all you got to do. You don't want to do anything else. So now this goes in, and then you push the cable into that slot. And sometimes it's easy, and sometimes it's not so easy, but you'll, it'll go in. Don't worry. Just push it down with your fingers like so until you get to the center okay just use your thumbnail and push that in yep look at that 
It's almost as though I meant to do it. Okay. So it's going to look like that. Okay. And then, of course, you do the same to the other side. Now, back to the carbon rod. Now, I've just cut this to, to length. So I just use a, a normal household junior hacksaw to cut it. You don't need any special tools for that. I'm going to do a trial fit on that. And by Jupiter, it fits. Yeah. So all I've got to do is just take the dihedral out again, mix up my five minute epoxy, put the five minute epoxy in, pop that on top, weight it down, let it go off, and we're nearly there. So I am going to go back to the kitchen, take this dihedral out now, which you don't really need to see because I've already done that in the previous video, and then we'll crack on. Okay, bear with me, it'll all make sense in the end. <laughs> okay, don't despair, please don't despair. All right, now, time for the five minute epoxy. I have got myself some lollipops out of my bag of bits. You need and something to mix your five minute epoxy in. This is a, a lid of a ice cream tub, which is red berry sorbet. Oh, how about that? So, what you do, you get your epoxy and your wing and you do a, a final check to see that the carbon rod will go in, especially after I've just straightened the wing out again. Okay, you won't need any special tools. So what we're going to do is, is mix up the epoxy. So a good old splurge there of the, uh, the hardener with the red top on and the resin itself so there you go an equal amount splurge 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 there you go and you get your lollipop stick and you mix that together there you go lovely jubbly 50 50 mix now remember this just takes five minutes so obviously i will fast forward parts of this because otherwise you'd just be like watching glue dry boom boom okay there you go mix it all in now we're just about ready so we'll take the carbon rod out that's ready and all we're going to do is spoon it in okay and I'm just going to work from the, the middle outwards And part of the job of the carbon fiber is to stop that from happening. But the main purpose for the carbon fiber is that if you're flying this with ailerons, you're going to be putting high stresses on it. And this carbon rod is going to stop your wing from snapping in two. So you lay it in like so. And don't forget to put your gloves on because it gets real sticky and it's just going to end in tears and you'll have sticky hands for the rest of the evening run your finger down it there you go and you just keep pressing it in and pressing it in and pressing it in so what I'm going to do is just turn you off for a minute and I'm just going to hold that in place. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so the epoxy has gone off. So while you've been away, I uh, popped in the other servo just to save time. That seems to sit okay, that seems to sit okay. 
and of course I've popped the uh, the cable in there so it comes out here so eventually that will go into the fuselage or as we like to say the fuzz the fuzz so what's next well the next thing is besides clearing up oh by the way uh, before I go any further it's under no circumstances do you glue these in yet you glue these in at the very very end and not before because if you need to make an adjustment or a mistake they're glued in and there's nothing you can do about it so just don't glue these in just leave them as they are for now okay so this carbon fibre rod is in the epoxy is dry the wing is level there's no dihedral in there okay so that's what one of the jobs that this carbon fibre does is keep that dihedral out besides strengthening your wing and your wing will have a high amount of stress and tension and torque on it because you're about to use ailerons now what I have done and I highly um, stress that you do it is mark out where your fuselage is going to go and just to make sure that it doesn't interfere with where your ailerons are going to be now what I really should do is mark the other side of the wing for the ailerons so let's just do that and I'll grab a pencil because it's only just occurred to me you see it's not, it's not rehearsed there's a pencil so I'm going to mark that trailing edge there okay like that there you go and obviously here in a straight line I think we can all make a straight line over 10 millimeters I've already done it this end and so I can mark it on the top okay so mark it on the top that depth will be 45 there yeah okay we'll make them both 45 then so 45 here we go there you go there 45 You can't use a set square on here because the wing is not straight, it's got no straight lines in it basically. So you just got to get it right as best you can. And from there, centre line that says 22. Okay, let's go, let's call it 25 from the centre line. So mark the centre line there. And here. There we are. It's all live, ladies and gentlemen. We said 25, didn't we? So we're just double checking that. That one is actually Bob on. This one is slightly out by about two millimeters, but that's all right. I'm gonna cry over that. Okay, 25. So this is this is your only this center line is your only straight line you've got, so you work everything from the center line. Okay. Now it is important to get the ailerons symmetrical because obviously when they're working if they're all the same length and thickness all the way through 
it, the, the aircraft is going to react the way that you want it to otherwise it might swing more one way and swing less the other only by a fraction but sometimes that fraction makes all the difference now this you take your pound shop ruler I mean a pound for that I mean you know how do they even make it for that much um, that's probably a political question which I think is probably wise not to get into so anyway let's just double check we've got the tips at the right measurements so that tip from that mark to that tip is 12 millimeters so that one's slightly out so I'm going to mark it there okay right so all we have to do now is line that up like so and I hope you can can you, can you see that yeah okay line that up and draw your line like that so almost the whole edge uh, almost the whole trailing edge is your aileron okay so remember it makes it highly highly aerobatic and if highly aerobatic is what you want by joe that's what you're going to get so it's this one here it down and there we are okay now it doesn't really matter if you've made a mistake in your marking out and you've corrected it because you know this this washes off you can wash that off a little bit of soap and water and also don't forget you have with the the kit you have uh, these stickers that go on so you can cover all that up you can cover all that up if you buy two or three of these things well you can do top and bottom can't you now it's best now to lay this flat for the next part which is going to be cutting this out all right, now this is the part where you're thinking, oh, not sure if I want to do that, but fake favours the brave. And I'm not in, in this to, uh, to lose. So I have a brand new sharp blade. And you have to, as best you can, keep this absolutely vertical okay and it's, it's even easier if you have a candle and heat up the blade because it will go through the foam like a hot knife through butter or a hot knife through foam if you like and I'm trying to get this as bob on as I can And there you are. There's your aileron. So we need to cut out the other side. And we've double measured it, so it's just a carbon copy of that. I may fast forward this bit just to save time. Here we go.
There we go. And well, that's pretty close to where we originally marked it, is it not? That goes there. So the next thing is to make a hinge. Now, what we have to do, and this is the bit where uh, you've got to really concentrate on what you're doing is you need to put a chamfer on that so what I mean by that is if I can find my pencil we need to cut it like this cut it like that it's about 45 degrees the reason being is is that when this moves you'll be okay this way no problem but when you go this way you're hitting a flat edge so you have got to allow it to bend this way so what we're going to do is cut the bottom side to allow this to go this way it'll automatically go this way no problem okay so we have to grab our long ruler and our short ruler. Can you imagine if this was your dining table? You'd be in real trouble, I'll tell you. Let's take a measurement. We'll say one centimetre in from that leading edge there. So one centimetre in and we'll mark that. 10 millimeter if you like and we'll just go down and mark 10 millimeters all the way down just at certain places and it's just so we get a straight line so when we lay the ruler on we know that it's absolutely bob on okay Lay the long ruler on. There you go. They all line up. Yep. Draw your line. Now as I said before, measure twice, cut once. So you know this fits the right hand wing, if you like the starboard wing, the right hand wing. Okay, so you've got to remember this is the top. It might be worth putting an X on it or something like that just to remind yourself. So we're cutting the bottom, the bottom. Okay, now this is where a steady hand comes in and a really really sharp blade now what the hell did I just do with that blade here it is so there we are so what we're going to do I'm just going to start it off to that edge okay it's just to start it off and You shouldn't really pull a blade towards you but when you're trying to do this to a video camera needs must so I have to be extra specially careful regular guy so there we go and that's what you end up with you see that and I just did that totally freehand and I have no great skills so don't be afraid 
to have a go. Okay. Now, we know this is the starboard, or if you like, the right wing. You can see probably just there that little bit of curvature where the um, dihedral was. But don't worry about that because this will just come into place. Now, please allow for this to move on here. You don't want it to be absolutely flush because it'll just bind. Okay, so you just need to take maybe one millimetre to at best off this edge here. So it doesn't bind there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Get it flat as I can. And just follow that, that line there, basically. Yeah. Here we go. Can you see that? So in actual fact, you're shortening the aileron by two or three millimetres. And so, which will end up with when that tip lines up there, you get a bit of a gap here. Now I haven't done it quite straight, so I'm going to straighten that up slightly. take another millimetre off there you're not going to get everything right first time you know that don't you okay so there you are now that can move freely so I'm going to jump a little bit Get rid of this paper, I think. Uh, sticky bat plastic. I've been waiting years to say that. And I'm just going to reiterate what size this is. This says 47, 48 mil. And in inches, that's one and three quarters one and three quarter inches so what we're going to do is we are going to basically do that sticky bat plastic oh wow lay that on the aileron so about I don't know an inch one end and half an inch another Rub it down, make sure it's sticking on. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. Okay, let's hold that back, offer it up. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Right behind that blade, I'm just gonna trim that bit of sellotape off. Starting at the tip end, okay, and there you go. Get a bubble. Well, I don't like for the so and so. There you go. And then we just trim off that bit there. There we go. So that's 
So this is what we end up with. We end up with full movement this way and enough movement this way. Now, I, you might say, well, you know, how much memory do you need? <laughs> You're going to have to take my word for it. That, ladies and gentlemen, when you're traveling at high speed is a great deal and that will just spin quicker than you can think you don't even need that much movement um, but it's available should you need it in fact you probably need that much movement if at all okay but if you need it you got a lot more movement so there we have your aileron attached uh, you just got to make sure that it's all nicely pressed in. There's nothing. On, oh, there's nothing on the bottom there. You don't need it. You don't need it. You can if you like. Yeah. Plenty of movement there. And don't forget, it's almost the full length of the wing. So that little bit of movement, that little bit of movement is going to give a great deal of turning, you know, it, it's just going whew, real quick. So there you are. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do this side in a moment. But I'm going to do that off camera because I need to concentrate on it using exactly the same methods. And then what I'm going to do is, is put the control horns on. I'll show you how to do that. And um, we're nearly there. We're very, so very nearly there. So let me do that bit and put it on just the same as the other one. And um, yeah, we'll be there. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> 